वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स स्टार्टिंग विद न्यू चैप्टर नोन एज लीनियर इक्वेशन लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट वॉट डज दिस लीनियर इक्वेशन मीन्स वी वेरी वेल नो द वर्ड इक्वेशन इन अलजेबर द इक्वेशन मीन्स एनी एक्सप्रेशन विच हैज इक्वल टू साइन एनी एक्सप्रेशन विच हैज इक्वल टू साइन इज नोन एज एन इक्वेशन बट वॉट डज दिस लीनियर मीन्स ओके लेट्स सी द डेफिनेशन ऑन द स्क्रीन okay let's understand each and everything from this statement from this definition a linear equation the name of the chapter what we are studying right now a linear equation is an algebraic equation is an algebraic equation as i told you any expression in maths which has equal to sign is called as an equation but what is the speciality about this word linear a linear equation is an algebraic expression having variables with the highest power as 1 so any expression which has equal to sign and having highest power as 1 is called as a linear equation let's see some example over here example for example i say 5x 5x plus 3y is equal to 7 here i have two variables one is x and other is y variables are the alphabets okay the power of x is 1 when nothing is mentioned then by default it's 1 and the power of y when nothing is mentioned by default it's 1 so see this and because i have equal to sign so it's an equation so a linear equation is an algebraic equation having variables with highest power 1 so x ka highest power is 1 y ka highest power is 1 so this example this is the example of linear equation okay let me give you one another example uh, 3x plus 7y plus 9z is equal to 75 okay here there are three variables x y z let's check their powers the power, highest power of x nothing is mentioned means by default it's 1 it's 1 it's 1 So this is also a linear equation this i will call as linear equation in two variables because here we have two variables here i will call linear equation in three variables now give, let's uh, have a another example for, for example 3x is equal to 72 here the only there is only one variable with the highest power 1 because nothing is mentioned it's one this is a linear equation with one variable okay so any a linear equation is an algebraic equation having variables with the highest power as 1 it's very simple chapter students let's start with the exercise part okay students we have exercise 7.1 question number 1 which is solve the word solve means we need to find the value of unknowns unknowns are nothing but the variables and here we have sub question b in front of you m upon 4 is equal to 9 so tell me which is the variable in this question it's very obvious students that the variable in this question is m it's not necessary that always the variable will be x y z and z only so here the unknown the variable is m and solve means we need to find the value of this variable m and it's very difficult problem it's really very difficult see it's so difficult please see here therefore can i say this 4 will be multiplied with this 9 so m is equal to 9 multiplied by 4 oh my god so it's so difficult now so what will be the answer therefore m is equals to 9 multiplied by 4 it's 36 and this is the answer yes this much difficult it is pause the video and complete everything first okay students now on the screen we have next sub question heading is same solve sub question i 19 is equal to 2c upon 7 minus 10 okay let's solve this question now here the solve means we need to find the value of unknown the variable here the variable is c okay so to find the variable first i need to separate out that variable okay the common mistake over here is in the excitement what students do is they just say okay we have equal to here the 7 will be multiplied with 19 no it cannot be why because we have two terms over here so it's not like that that we have only one term if it would be the case that there is no minus 10 over here there is just 19 is equal to 2c upon 7 then we can say the 7 will be going here and it gets multiplied over here 
So now, but we also have to take care about this minus 10 over here. So the best step over here will be the best and easy way will be I'll take this minus 10 on the left hand side. So it will become plus 10. So therefore 19 plus 10 is equal to 2c upon 7. Now therefore 19 plus 10 becomes 29 is equal to 2c upon 7. And now I can do that step. Now I can say this, that we have one term on the left hand side and one term on the right hand side. So the 7 can be multiplied with this 29. Okay, so therefore 29 multiplied by 7 is equal to 2c please over here. Okay, let's multiply. Therefore 7 9s are 63, here carry 6, 7 2s are 14, 14 plus 6 is 20, 203 is equal to 2c. Okay, and now I want the value of this only c this variable so this 2 will go down therefore 203 upon 2 okay is equal to c let's do the cancellation how to do the cancellation see this 2 1s are 2 1s are 2 the 0 as it is 0 okay it's 3 so 2 1s are it's 2 can I say 1 is remaining 1 is the remainder and 1 is small than 2 so I will put a decimal point and I will put a zero over there. It becomes 10. So two fives are, it's 10 please. Okay, so the what will be the value? The value will be there for the value of C is 101.5. It's so simple. Pause the video please and complete it fast. Now the next question on the screen. It's sub question O. 2x upon 3 minus 3x upon 5 is equal to 8. Once again, I will say this will not be the case that this 5 will be multiplied with this 8 or this 3 will be multiplied with 8. Uh, because we have two terms on the left hand side, we have one term on the right hand side. Okay, here the heading is solved. That means we need to find the value of the unknown. And in our case, now the value, uh, sorry, the variable is x over here. So what will be the best case? How to solve this now? Please see this. Uh, can I say now, can I say this, can I multiply this 5 over here? the middle sign will be minus can I say this 3 will be multiplied with this 3x over here 5 will be multiplied with this 2x 3 will be multiplied with this 3x and middle sign will be minus and in the denominator these two things will be multiplied with each other okay let's do it let's try this all of you so therefore therefore 5 multiplied by 2x 5 2s are becomes 10x in between we have minus 3 multiplied by 3x 3 3s are 9 becomes 9x the whole upon 5 3s are is 15 is equal to 8 okay now what will happen now this entire thing on the left hand side is one term and now I can say this 15 can be multiplied directly with this 8 please okay so this will be therefore 10x minus 9x is 1x no need to write this one okay and this 15 this 8 will be multiplied with this 15 and we get our answer that's it therefore x is equal to 8 5s are See, no need to do the multiplication over here. Always have this habit of doing directly over here, please. 8 5s are is 40. Carry over 4. 8 1s are 8. Plus 4 is 12. That's it. We got the value of x. The variable as 120. Pause the video, please. And do it by yourself. Okay, students. The next question is in front of you. It's 3n upon 4 minus 4n upon 12 is equal to 3 upon 12. Now, definitely... See, I can do some reduction over here. I can say 3 1s are, 3 4s are will be 12. Okay. 4 1s are, 4 3s are will be 12. Understand please, this is very important. I'll mark a star over here. See, definitely I can say this over here. I'll help you out over here. That here I have 3 upon 12. So this, it's 3 upon 12. So I can do 3 1s are and 3 4s are. So remainder will, uh, sorry, the denominator will be 4 over here. I have 4 n upon 12. So 4n upon 12, I can definitely write 4 1s are, 4 3s are. So then this denominator will become 3. But by doing this, what happens? I can see here that, uh, I will not say that we are turning out to be more complicated, but uh, we are changing the denominators. Right now I can see th uh, the more simple way, the simple thing over here. Okay, so in, I definitely know that we can reduce it, but I will not deliberately reduce it because I can see that these two denominators are same. Totally, we have three terms. First term, second term, and this is three terms. Out of these three terms, 
the denominators of these two terms are same. Here is 12, here is 12. So anyhow, can I make this denominator as 12? Yes, definitely, because here I have 4. So if I multiply the numerator with 3 and the denominator also with 3, so this becomes 12. Okay, so see this please. 3n upon 4, I'll copy this as it is, minus 4n upon 12, I'll copy this as it is, 3 upon 12, I'll copy this as it is, please. Okay, and I'll multiply this with 3 and this with 3. Okay, why? Because 4 3s are becomes 12. So the, in order to make all the denominators same, which is 12, please. Okay, so this will become 3 3s are 9. Okay, 3 3s are 9. So 9n upon 4 3s are 12 minus 4n upon 12 is equal to 3 upon 12. Now, now see it's very simple now. Can I say I can take a common denominator here? So therefore this becomes 9n minus 4n. Okay. 9n minus 4n and there will be a common denominator 12 over here is equal to 3 upon 12. Now definitely I have only one term on the left hand side and only one term on the right hand side. So because I have one one term then I can do the step this is 12 12 cancels. Okay this I can cancel only when because I have one term because this is one common denominator one common upon sign here this was not possible to cut this 12 12 so this 12 12 goes off please okay so what i'm left with what i'm left with 9 n minus 4 n 9 minus 4 is 5 so 5 n is equal to 3 please that's it so therefore n is equal to 3 upon 5 um if you want you can convert this into decimal points also Okay, so this 3 is small than 5. So 5 1 is a 5 0 point. When I put up the decimal point, it I can append a 0 over there. It becomes 30. So 5 6 is a 30. It's 0 0.6. So both the answers are acceptable over here. You can al also say n is equal to 3 upon 5. Or you can say n is equal to 0 0.6. If you leave at 3 upon 5, then also you'll get full marks. Pause the video. It was a very good sum. Do it fast.